So about two years ago, I was kind of unemployed. I was, I was completely unemployed. And so because I really didn't have any options, I started a custom furniture business and I started this YouTube channel. But because I was unemployed, I didn't have any money. So I scraped together a tiny little bit of money, about $250 and I bought the bare minimum equipment that I could use to get a channel up and off the ground. Now, fast forward two years. This channel now has almost 50,000 subscribers. I am transitioning out of custom furniture making and right now this channel is about 90% of what I do day to day. It's my full-time job. I'm not getting rich, but I am completely knocking out a living at this. And I've done all of that with the same basic equipment that I bought two years ago for about 250 bucks. Would you like to know how I did that? Well, I have good news. I really enjoy talking about things on camera. To get a YouTube channel going, you need three things. You need a topic, a way to capture video, and a way to edit that video. Now for me, the topic was pretty straightforward. I knew I wanted to do a woodworking channel, but there were already a million of those out there, and I wanted to differentiate myself. So I thought, well, I have a lot of experience working in professional woodworking shops. So I'll take the experience I have doing professional woodwork and bring that to the hobby woodworker to make hobby woodworking faster, easier, and more fun. Boom. That's a perfectly good channel topic. Now, you don't need any special experience like that to have a channel. For instance, my friend James Wright runs the excellent channel Wood by Wright, and he wanted to start a channel about hand tool woodworking. And his very first video is him buying his first hand plane. And his channel catalogs his whole journey from not knowing anything about hand tool woodworking to being really very good at it. So it's not necessary for you to be an expert. Your enthusiasm for a topic and your journey through that topic, that's plenty for you to form a channel around. Now, once you know what your channel is going to be about, you're going to have to capture video somehow. Now, these days, a lot of people are making their whole channel on a smartphone or a tablet, doing the shooting and the editing right there in the device. That's got to be a great way to go if you're on a tight budget, but it's not the way I work. So I'm going to talk about this instead. This is the Canon Vixia HF 600 camcorder. And when I bought it about two years ago, it was the cheapest HD camcorder on the market. I think it was about $180. And this obviously looks kind of like a joke. It's hard to believe that I run a YouTube channel off this soda can sized toy camera, but it works fine. And here's why. A lot of people will tell you, oh, you have to get a DSLR or a fancier camera with a lot of manual settings to shoot videos. The problem with that is that DSLRs are optimized for still photography more than video, and they're made for people who know something about photography. I didn't really know anything about that stuff when I started YouTube. A camera like this was perfect for me because it allowed me to have a point and shoot run and gun channel where I more or less aimed the camera at what I was covering, turned it on and started flapping my gums. And about 80 videos later, that approach has worked out pretty decently for me. Now, I will admit the downside of this camera is that my videos haven't looked great. In fact, they haven't even looked very good. I've had a lot of issues with color balance and the footage has generally been quite grainy because this is a cheap camera with very few adjustments and after two years of using it, I still haven't even learned how to do very much with it. You can see that in the quality of my videos. But my channel is informational and my viewers have mostly told me, eh, we don't really care how your videos look. Just keep teaching us stuff. And serving my viewers is what matters more than having an artsy, beautiful looking picture. Now, despite its shortcomings, I am super happy with this camera, and I'm really glad that I bought it. I want to explain how I got it very cheaply. I looked at the camcorders out there that offered full HD. That was a little bit rarer on the market two years ago. And I think the camera that Canon was pushing at that point was the next model, the HF 700. And so what I did is I saw the HF 700 and I said, okay, what's the previous model? Is that still HD? It is. And every time a company brings out a new model of something, they usually stop promoting the previous model. And what they want to do is get rid of it. So this camera was deeply discounted. It was $300 or $350 when it first came out, and it was discounted all the way down to $180. So I was able to buy it, stay within budget, and get a camera that got the job done. If you're going to be working alone, like a lot of YouTubers do, you're also going to need a tripod to put your camera on. The good news about tripods is that everybody bought one in the 80s, and they've still got it in their garage. 
So you find these things at tag sales and they are so cheap. I buy them for a dollar sometimes. It is good to own a couple of different tripods for different things. You can see I've got a really tall one over here that extends up even higher. I find that one very handy for shooting myself from up above, especially when I'm on the lathe. That tool is super tricky to shoot footage on. I've also got this little, I guess, portable one here. I use this one for shots that are close to the ground. Um, a lot of these tripods just sit around and gather dust. What I really like is this tripod right here. And this is just a Sears branded tripod that was made in Japan. And what I like about this tripod is that it has very few adjustments, but it has the adjustments that you need. The legs telescope, so you can put it at lots of different heights. You've got another adjustable height here. It pans back and forth. It goes up and down. It does all the basic things that you need a tripod to do. I think I paid $5 for it. It's getting the job done and it's helping my workflow to stay consistent. So I'm gonna stick with this one. Once you've got your camera and your tripod figured out, you're also gonna need appropriate lighting. If you already have a well-lit space in your house, you probably think, oh, I could just film in here. It looks really good. What you have to understand is that the amount of light that a camera needs is much, much greater than the light that your eyes need. So a well-lit room for you is gonna look dim on camera. And when you have a scene that's well-lit for the camera, it might be uncomfortably bright for you. For instance, right now, I've got two big LED panel lights pointing at me, and they're really bright. It's kind of hard to look into them. I've just sort of had to get used to it while making videos. As you're just getting started, I recommend you pick up a couple of these. These are called can lights or reflectors. There's a couple different names for them, and they're really fantastic. You can buy them off of Amazon. They're about $12, and what you get is this big aluminum cone that acts as a reflector and allows you to direct the light in whatever direction you want. They also come with a switch, a socket that you can put any standard light bulb into, and a clip right here, which you can just stick to things. So you take one of these plus a standard LED light bulb that you just buy at the hardware store and bam, you've got an instant decent kind of mediocre filming light, but it totally gets the job done. What I really like about these is that these are positionable in all sorts of different directions and they pretty much stay where you put them. This one doesn't because it's old and loose, but generally they do. And this clip makes it really handy. When I first started making videos, I didn't have any lighting stands or anything. So I just had several of these and I would just clip them to the edge of my workbench, to the back of a chair. I had some little wooden brackets that I had made. I would just stick them to anything point them at what I was doing and go, and it worked. It got me off the ground. Now, as time went on, I wanted more control over my lighting, so I started taking these and modifying them to make them better for filming. So when I first got started making videos, this is the first light stand I ever made. The basic structure of it is half of an adjustable clothing rack. They sell these at Target or Home Depot, places like that, and people just throw them away a lot of the time. And it's this adjustable central shaft right here, and then there's another adjustable part here that you put a rod through and then you'd be able to hang your clothes on it. I just took half of it and then I made a little wooden base just out of some cheap particle board and I screwed that in there. And then I took my can lamp that I already had and I made this adjustable wooden bracket and stuck the whole thing in there. It was very quick to make. I probably made it in about an hour and I've used this for over a year now and honestly, I love it, it's great because I can position the light wherever I want it, it's height adjustable so it goes wherever I need, it's on an arm so I can stick it out over a table if I'm trying to shoot something on a tabletop, and I can just stick any regular old light bulb in it and it works. I own better filming lights now, but I'm still gonna keep this one around because it's a really valuable spotlight. I also made this thing here for filming, and this is just one of these big stand lamps that you can pick up at Ikea. So this is a, like a pillar lamp, and then it has the reflector that points up toward the ceiling to give you like ambient light in your bedroom or whatever. And what I did is I unmounted the reflector from the top, I built another wooden bracket, and then I just made this little piece of plywood that I screwed in, and I put two of the sockets from my can lamps in there, and then screwed two light bulbs in. I ran the wires out the back and I would just plug these into a power strip. And what was great about this is that it had height built in. It's not adjustable, but I almost always need light coming down from a higher source. I could get two bulbs 
bulbs into it. There was a nice big reflector, and this would give me a nice diffuse light all over what I was doing. And this was just sitting in the garbage. All I had to do was put in a couple sockets from can lamps and add a couple of light bulbs and I was pretty much good to go. Now, obviously, one part of stuff like this is that I'm a woodworker, I'm a professional craftsman, I make things for a living, but I have to tell you, I did a super crappy job on these. I really think that almost anybody who has some random junk laying around their house can figure out something where lighting stands are concerned. Everything that I made my lighting stands out of literally came out of the garbage, and I used them for like two years, and they were completely effective. You can do this too. And in addition to having lights on some good stands, which is really important because you want to point light at stuff, I also recommend just having good ambient lighting all over your room. I'm working in a shop environment, so what's worked really well for me is these big four-foot LED fixtures. Uh, I buy mine at Costco, but you can grab them on Amazon or pretty much everywhere. They cost 20, 25 bucks. I already had a bunch of these in my shop when I started my YouTube channel, but recently I've been adding to them and getting a couple more, and just having good ambient light all around really improves the quality of your shots. Okay, so now we have a complete recording hardware setup. Once you've got your footage, you're gonna have to do something with it. And that includes editing, but also a lot of peripheral stuff. Like, you're gonna need some sort of graphic software to design your thumbnails. You might wanna make plans or PDFs or other materials to include with your videos. That's gonna require some sort of software. There's a whole bunch of stuff you need to do beyond just shooting the videos. Now, I should mention that when I started this channel, I already owned an okay computer. It's about four years old right now, it's an HP, it's nothing super special, gets the job done just fine, and I don't plan on upgrading anytime soon. So you don't need some super ninja computer to get this done. What you do need is software. My channel spends zero dollars on software, because everything I need to put my videos and all my other materials together is available for free. The number one program that lets this channel run is called Blender, and it's what I use to edit my videos. Blender is a free and open source program that's actually made for 3D animation, and you can actually produce a complete 3D animated film right there in Blender at zero cost. Now, I don't know anything about 3D animation, but because it's a complete movie making solution, Blender includes a really good video editor. So I just use that part and I don't use any of the animation or drawing capabilities that it has. Now right here, I've got to shout out a YouTube creator called Mikey Cal Myers. He has a really fantastic channel that is mostly tutorials about how to use Blender for video editing. I only understand how to use Blender because of Mikey Cal and his outstanding work. So go subscribe to him and watch his tutorials. You can edit your videos for no money using this program. Now, in addition to editing video, you might also need to edit audio. For that, I recommend Audacity. It's an excellent multi-track digital audio program, and it's absolutely free. It's not super full-featured, but it does a lot of things. It's got a bunch of plugins and effects that you can add, and it is super quick and intuitive to use. You'll pick it up in like an hour, even if you've never done this stuff before, and it's totally free. Now, with my videos, I put a lot of effort into making a decent looking thumbnail, and I also produce a lot of other material around my videos. Like, I do these things called tip sheets, and I do PDFs, I wrote a book last year, I've done little animations, all sorts of stuff like that, so I need good drawing and painting software. And most people, for this, they would turn to Photoshop, but Photoshop costs a lot of money. Luckily, there's a free and open source alternative, it's called GIMP which I know is a funny name, but it stands for Graphic Image Manipulation Program. And it's another one of these free open source programs, and it's, it's basically Photoshop for idiots. It doesn't do nearly as much as Photoshop actually does, but I don't even understand most of what Photoshop does, so that program would be a waste of money for me. GIMP has so many different features, filters, effects, paint brushes, that it's got everything that somebody like me could possibly ever need. It's pretty much the only thing I use for thumbnails, tip sheets, and I even use it when I'm editing pictures for my books, and when I'm making PDFs or putting together plans that I'm gonna sell. It's an excellent solution for most of your graphic needs. When it comes to software, I thought that I was just gonna use these free programs to get up and running and then upgrade later on, but I have to be honest, I've been really happy with the performance that I've gotten out of them, and it's tough for me to see why I should shell out money when I'm getting things done at a level that I like 
for free. When I get to the point where I'm ready to spend more money on software, what I'm going to do is take some of that money and donate it to the people who make the software I already use. GIMP and Blender in particular take donations and they're supported by people who use the software. A lot like the way this channel is supported by patrons and supporters. And I'd like to give those people some help, so when I have the extra cash, I plan to. So I really hope that I've gotten the point across here. You can have a YouTube channel if you want one. And resources shouldn't stop you. I had very little money when I started mine and I've still built a pretty successful little thing here. And you can do that too. Even if you feel like you don't have the stuff you need, you should make a video, however you can do it, and put it up. I recently looked back at my first video and it, it, it's terrible. The picture quality is bad. I'm stiff in front of the camera. I talk too slowly. It's too long. I'm, I'm not embarrassed by it, but I don't like it very much. But you know what? That video has over 22,000 views. And that's a lot of views for a bad piece of content. And more importantly, the comments and the likes and all the stuff around the video is pretty much positive. And the video did what it was supposed to do. It taught people something. That's what my channel is for. It's for teaching things and communicating ideas. If you're getting that done, it sort of doesn't matter if the technical aspects aren't what you want. So if you want to start a channel, do that. And then as it goes on, you might be able to make money off that channel and afford some of the things to bring up that technical stuff. You never know what's possible until you get going. And I want to mention that I said before I do this pretty much full time, and that's true, and it's true largely because of my patrons on Patreon. The money I get directly from YouTube is not nearly an income by itself, but with support from patrons, I can make this channel financially viable. If you're interested in seeing all of the rewards and early access that I have only for my patrons, go over to patreon.com slash rexkruger and check out what's available. Maybe you want to throw a couple bucks in the hat. Maybe you want to be a part of the fantastic community there. And for my international viewers, I am hard at work making my flag wall so that you can see yourself and your country represented on this channel. I should have it up in time for my next video. And if you want to keep up with what's going on with me between now and then, you can check me out on the Make or Break podcast, which will be airing on this date that I will put down here on the screen. And I had a really fascinating conversation with Brandon, the host, and I hope you'll tune in and check it out and also subscribe to his podcast, which is fantastic. I will put links to that in the notes, and I will also put links to all the products and supplies that I mentioned. A lot of good, cheap materials there. So I hope this video was valuable to you. Thanks so much for watching.